Time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, FSN Prime Ticket presents the Dodgers as they take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Friday night to you, wherever you may be. Yes, he is here. Manny Ramirez is here. There was a big press conference. More importantly, he's hitting fourth with Russell Martin hitting third and Jeff Kent hitting behind him. For the Dodgers, they will need Ramirez bat because they'll be facing Randy Johnson. Now, Randy Johnson's lifetime against the Dodgers is 7-6. and six. That doesn't get your attention. What does get your attention is Randy Johnson's record at Dodger Stadium. Six victories and no defeats. And the veteran left-hander will be going up against the kid, Clayton Kershaw. And, of course, that brings memories of when Edwin Jackson started over in Arizona against Randy. And with all of it said and done, the Dodgers trail Arizona by two. So, yes, Virginia, it is a big one. We'll have it all coming up for you right after this. Minutes away from a huge game here at Dodger Stadium, the debut of Manny Ramirez at game two of a four-game set with the Diamondbacks. Back at center field, Patrick O'Neill, Kevin Kennedy, and Steve Lyons. Time for the keys to the game. Kevin, starting with you. Well, it was Manny being Manny in Boston. Now I like to see it, Manny being a Dodger, being part of this team. He's going to have new life. I think he's going to be part of this team. I think he's going to be a huge run producer. This guy can hit in any ballpark, any place, any time. Doesn't matter where he's at. Now he's in L.A. For me, Clayton Kershaw's got to keep the ball down. If he doesn't, this offense is too streaky and too strong. They'll hit the ball out of the park. They're good hitters. If he keeps it down, you get a lot of ground balls. You win games. Manny got three hours of sleep, but he was happy and jovial. Said he got to stretch in and got something to eat. So he is definitely ready to go. We'll see the big unit and Clayton Kershaw coming up. Don't forget to join us for Dodgers Live right after the game. We'll talk about Manny's night. We got interviews from both locker rooms at True Blue Stories 1990. Stay tuned for the first pick with Vince Scully next. Dodger Baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Fees don't fly with us. Visit Southwest.com. By Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. And by Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico Defendability. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Friday night to you, wherever you may be. It's the D-backs and the Dodgers. There are 50 professional Major League players in uniform here, but all eyes are on the newcomer, Manny Ramirez. It started, really, in the Dodger clubhouse. When he arrived, the feeling was he couldn't wear number 24. That belonged to Walter Alston, and the thought was he would wear 28. Then when he got to the clubhouse, they said, how about number 34? And uh, anyway, they danced around that. That was Fernando's great number. Then he finally said to Mitch Poole, the Dodger equipment manager, okay, how about 66? And they said, okay, you got 66. And then about 20 minutes later, he came back and said, no, I'll go with 99. So good old 99 is trotting out to left field to say hello to his fans. And we might also talk about the impact of Manny Ramirez already today. We were told Billy Delury passed it along to us from Bill Hunter that from 1 p.m. yesterday when the announcement that Manny Ramirez was coming to Los Angeles from 1 p.m. yesterday until 4 p.m. today they sold an additional 11,000 seats. So, of course, tremendous interest to see the newcomer, one of the great hitters the game has had. Also, it will be interesting to see his first test in the National League against another 
all star and Hall of Famer to be Randy Johnson. So there's a lot on the line tonight but let's now try to put it in proper perspective. He is just one of the men on the field and we'll take a look now at the Arizona lineup. Stephen Drew starts off at shortstop followed by Chris Young in center. The old dog Orlando Hudson at second. Connor Jackson who made that great throw last night in left field. Mark Reynolds at third base. Tony Clark good buddy of Manny's. He's at first base for Arizona tonight. Chris Snyder who made that remarkable tag of Andre Ethier last night. He'll be behind the plate. Chris Burke will be in right field replacing Alex Romero and of course on the mound Randy Johnson on the mound for the Dodgers young Clayton Kershaw picked up his first big league victory last time out and it is no big deal in some ways for Kershaw to draw Randy Johnson after all back on the 10th of June he started against Greg Maddox in San Diego and went five and a third and only allowed two runs. And for Clayton Kershaw it's kind of a break the Dodgers somewhat desperate to win this game tonight but not so much pressure because of the arrival of Ramirez. So Stephen Drew up there takes a look at a breaking ball for a strike and we're underway. Drew hitting 273 12 home runs 42 runs batted in. For the D backs they've been hitting very well of late. Strike one pitch slow and in there strike two last night Stephen Drew had two singles and a double and he has his average at 273 for the month of July Arizona as a team hit 272 Drew pops it up back a third and foul ground Casey Blake is there waiting and puts it away. So one out and let's take a look at the Dodgers with the leather James Loney and Jeff Kent Kent returning to the starting lineup. Then you have Angel Barroa and Casey Blake Manny Ramirez starting for the Dodgers in left. Then you have Andrew Jones in center. You have Matt Kemp in right Russell Martin behind the plate. So one away and the center fielder for Arizona Chris Young checking in at the plate. Young right hand batter ground ball immediately to Baroa who makes the play and just like that two down in the first inning. It's interesting too on this night that Manny Ramirez makes his debut as a Dodger his former teammate with the Boston Red Sox Nomar Garcia Parra goes on the disabled list. So Manny arrives Nomar sits down. The Dodgers feel that Nomar could be ready before the end of his time but they want him to play short they want him to be a hundred percent. So here now with two down is Orlando Hudson. Switch hitter fouls a pitch away off to the right no balls and one strike to count. In the month of July Stephen Drew hit 311. Connor Jackson on deck hit 343. And Hudson hit 358 to get his average up to 307. Strike one pitch on the way. It's a fastball hit slowly up along third. Bare hand pick up by Blake, and the throw got him. Big play by Casey Blake. Orlando might beat that out batting left handed, but not right. And so here come the Dodgers Kemp, Blake, and Martin, and the D backs fail to score in the first inning. Clayton Kershaw made six pitches in the first inning all strikes and set the D-backs down in order thanks to Casey Blake. Now let's take a look at the Dodger lineup and it goes this way Matt Kemp leads off and right Casey Blake at third Russell Martin gets the opportunity and we use that word carefully to hit in front of Ramirez so pitchers are certainly going to try to throw strikes to Martin with Manny hitting back of him. Then you have Jeff Kent James Loney Andrew Jones Angel Barroa and Clayton Kershaw and on the mound Randy Johnson. Randy talking to two umpires the plate umpire Eric Cooper and the crew chief Daryl Cousins had a little meeting near first base. Randy is six feet ten two hundred and twenty five pounds and probably for the first time in his life he's on a team with someone who was taller down in the Arizona bullpen is John Roush. John Roush is six feet eleven. 
for Randy, born in Walnut Creek, makes his home over in the Phoenix area. Originally drafted by the Expos back in 1985. By the way, Randy will be 45 years old September the 10th. And the fastball is hit in the air down the right field line foul. Back into the crowd and the count 0 and 1 to Matt Kemp. Randy Johnson you could spend quite a while talking about him. He's working on a string right now of 15 consecutive scoreless innings. He has a four game winning streak and the tall left hander strike one pitch foul back in the count 0 and 2. Randy Johnson and Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw has won one major league game. Randy Johnson has won two hundred and ninety two. Randy has a career record against the Dodgers of seven and six. But here at Dodger Stadium six wins and no losses. The next one to Matt Kemp is high ball one one and two the count. Doc Gooden had a great time here at Dodger Stadium. He was six and two and Gooden's ERA against the Dodgers here was one point eight. The one two pitch is swung on and fouled away. So Matt a very hot hitter as you know standing aside of the plate for the moment. Kemp has hit in 18 straight. He is hit in 25 of 26 and during his streak he's hit 365 to move his average up to just under 300. Johnson back with a slider fouled away and the count stays one and two. So Kemp Blake and Martin. Matt Kemp of course brings a lot to the dance not only 12 home runs he also has 26 stolen bases and of course pays a price he has struck out 111 times somewhat unusual for a leadoff man but it's also unusual to have a leadoff man with his power. Randy looks over the tips of his glove almost menacingly and the one two pitch is swung on and missed and down goes Kemp. So one away here in the first inning. But of course if you're talking about Randy Johnson strikeouts are very much his middle name. I mean Randy just the other night has done something that's rather remarkable. He struck out 10 batters in San Diego. He's had 211 career double digit strikeout games. When he struck out Mike Cameron in Milwaukee he broke the record the tie with Roger Clemens so now he's right back in Nolan Ryan and his first pitch to Casey Blake is inside ball one. Casey making an excellent play to get Orlando Hudson and Blake batting 381. Randy back with a slider hit the third charged and short hop by Reynolds to throw him out and a very tough play for Tony Clark because he had to handle the throw right at the ribs of the runner and that's sure enough you can see Tony Clark flexing and unflexing his left hand. That's when you really get hurt reaching into a charging runner and he just did get his hand out of the way. That reminds us of a play involving the catcher Randy Hundley and Cliff Floyd and it just about wrecked Cliff Floyd's career. But Tony got by with it so two down. And the batter now is Russell Martin. And the first thing is, will he get a lot of fastballs? Well, the first pitch is fouled up along first base, and it was a slider in on the hands. No balls and one strike to count. And on deck, ready to make his debut offensively, Manny Ramirez. Johnson, by the way, with 29 walks, he has 102 strikeouts. So the number two strikeout man behind Nolan Ryan looks in to get a sign coming up 45 years old and the fastball is outside one ball and one strike. Russell hitting 297 he has 10 home runs 52 runs batted in Randy ready and delivers and it's swung on and missed and the count one and two good slider maybe not the slider that he had years ago I mean after all. He came up to the Expos 20 years ago. Spent a lot of time with the Mariners, the D-backs, the Yankees, the D-backs again. The one-two pitch on the way, and that's a little slider, not much break to it, off the outside corner. And the count, two balls and two strikes. I'm sure one of the things the crowd would love to see 
is to have Manny Ramirez come up with somebody on as opposed to leading off an inning. We'll see. The 2 2 pitch coming up. Another slider on the outside corner, and Russell Martin is caught looking. Down he goes. Randy Johnson strikes out two in the first inning, and at the end of an inning, Arizona nothing and the Dodgers nothing. Dodger baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by your Southern California Ford dealers. Come in and see what's new today. And by Jack in the Box, where we don't make it till you order it. Second inning, no score in the ball game here at Dodger Stadium. Randy Johnson retires the Dodgers on 13 pitches, striking out two of the three and throwing a lot of sliders. So now it'll be Jackson, Reynolds, and Clark against Kershaw, who bounces his first pitch and a one ball, no strike count. Connor Jackson leading the parade in the month of July hit 343. He had 36 hits and his on base percentage was 400. The 1 0 pitch to Connor on the inside corner for a strike. And the count one ball and one strike. Connor giving plate umpire Cooper the same look that Russell Martin gave him when he was called out on strikes. The so Jackson waiting and the right hand hitter bangs one into the gap in left center field heading for the wall. It hits the base of the wall. Ramirez picks it up and gets it back to Baroa. And a long double for Connor Jackson. You may remember last night in the seventh inning, Connor Jackson led off with a double. The D backs wound up scoring twice and went on to win the game two to one. So Connor Jackson, a long double to the gap, and now Mark Reynolds coming up. Mark Reynolds, a feast or famine hitter, he really fulfills that definition. Reynolds hitting 249. With 22 home runs, 70 runs batted in, but he has struck out 134 times. Right hand hitting third baseman. Kershaw ready, comes to the plate, fastball just outside, ball one. One and oh the count. Mark Reynolds, who figures to have a good long career here, got a lot of ability over there at third. He isn't the first player they've talked about if he would just cut down his strikeouts. A fake throw by Kershaw. Connor Jackson back to the bag. Reynolds waiting, bent slightly at the knees and waist. Kershaw looked back at second. The left hander delivers in the dirt. Great save by Russell Martin. Boy, that thing was coming in a hurry. 91 into the dirt. So Connor Jackson holding at second. Nice save. That thing almost got by Martin. Quick hands to keep it in play. Two balls and no strikes they count to Mark Reynolds. Beautiful evening. 74 degrees when the game started. No score. Kershaw's next pitch is high. Ball three. So remember in his first inning Clayton made only six pitches retired the side in order. Now he gives up a double and he goes three and zero to Reynolds. Now with his power, Tony Clark on deck. But with Reynolds' power, they might let him swing three and zero. Kershaw knows that, and the fastball is on the inside corner for a strike. Tough pitch to drive, and Reynolds took it. Three and one, the count to Mark. Mark Reynolds with a birthday just around the corner. His birthday will be Sunday, and he'll be 25 years old. Jackson at second nobody out 3 1 pitch coming up Kershaw deals fastball swung on and missed and he got the fastball up to 93 and a full count now to Mark Reynolds with the big switch hitting first baseman Tony Clark on deck. The way the Dodgers have struggled offensively of course every run is a precious thing. So Jackson at second nobody out and the fastball is hit slowly at third there's a play here and a throw to first in time Mark Reynolds instinctively thought that it was a foul ball and then left home plate belatedly there was no chance for Connor Jackson to move so Reynolds grounds to third unable to advance Jackson he stopped watching and the ball just did hit fair and Casey Blake threw him out easily. So one down Jackson at second 
And here's big Tony Clark. Of course, all things are a comparison. He's big at 6'7", but he still has to look up at Randy Johnson. The first pitch to Tony Clark in for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Clark and Manny Ramirez met behind second base before the game, gave each other a big hug. So they've had a friendship for quite a while, obviously. Tony, a first round pick by Detroit back in 1990. Kershaw set, looks at Jackson, then turns to drive him back to the bag. Tony hitting 220, two home runs, 15 runs batted in, started the year with the Padres, now with Arizona. And the two old friends going head to head against each other. The strike one pitch, Clark techs in the dirt, breaking ball, and again, nice save by Russell Martin on the curve. One ball and one strike, the count. So one away here in the second inning, no score, big crowd, a sellout we understand. Connor Jackson at second with one away. Plenty of seats, by the way, for tomorrow night and for Sunday. Here's the one one pitch, fastball away, ball two, two and one the count. So Tony Clark, the son of a retired naval officer who played a lot of tennis, believe it or not, and basketball, as you can well imagine, at 6 7. But his knees gave way on the tennis courts and on the basketball court. A superb athlete, so he went to baseball. 2 1 pitch is a fastball fouled off, and that fastball was down. Two balls and two strikes the count. Russell Martin with something perhaps in his eye behind the plate. So a timeout for the moment. Tough enough to catch, but then catching with something in your eye and somebody throwing 92 and 93. And now Martin settles into a crouch and he's okay. Two and two the count to Tony Clark. Kershaw left foot on the rubber set at the belt looks back at Connor Jackson and the 20 year old left hand is fastball is inside under the elbows at 92. So he went three and two to Reynolds and got him and he comes right back three and two to Clark. So it's a far cry from the first inning when his total pitches were only six. Three and two. One down, top of the second, no score. The pitch of the plate is a ground ball to the right side with Jeff Kent who will make the play. Connor Jackson advances to third. And the catcher, Chris Snyder, will be coming up. So two down. Snyder hitting 247, the big boy out of Houston. Nine home runs, 43 runs batted in. Made a marvelous play last night. You may remember it. The Dodgers had first and third, then second and third with two out. Kemp hit a fly ball to left. Connor Jackson's throw was pretty good, but Snyder had to go to his left to handle the hopper. He takes a look at the strike, and he gloved it with that mitt, one-handed, made a dive, and got Andre Ethier up around the face before Ethier could touch home plate. A huge play. And the D-backs won the game two to one. 0 oh and one the count to Chris Snyder. Kershaw comes back, fastball away, one and one. For those watching on television, we can show you the play last night. Snyder way off to his left, head first dive, and he gets Ethier at the ear as he went by. Huge play, big win. One ball and one strike the count. Back comes Kershaw with a fastball and misses ball two, two and one. The last four games with the D-backs are almost like World Series games. 8-7, 3-2, 6-5, and then last night 2-1. to one. I mean, that's tough on everybody, including managers Bob Melvin and Joe Torrey, and, of course, a tremendous game last night by Brendan Webb. He had to pitch a tremendous game because Derek Lowe was so very, very good, but Webb did it. Now the 2-1 pitch coming up. Kershaw's fastball is inside. So that means three consecutive hitters. He has a three ball count. Three and two to Reynolds. Three and two to Clark. Three and one to Snyder. And the right fielder Chris Burke on deck. 
Kershaw out of a stretch. Snyder waiting 3 1 pitch is taken high ball four. So Snyder draws the walk and Chris Burke playing because the Dodgers have a left hander going. So Chris Burke gets a chance to start. He's from Louisville Kentucky but lives in Knoxville Tennessee. Like any good volunteer he went to the University of Tennessee. Chris 28 years old 5'11 185. Kershaw ready and delivers and the pitch is fouled at the plate. Burke struggling with the bat hitting only 188. Seven runs batted in. The Clayton Kershaw laboring in the inning. He's made 21 pitches so far on top of the six he made in the first inning. No balls and one strike to Chris Burke. Kershaw ready here he comes big curve ball but he missed inside with that one ball and one strike for Clayton Kershaw with a runner at third and that's always a factor Kershaw has four wild pitches so Connor Jackson at the ready the one one pitch on the way fastball hit late and foul off of the right one and two the count. Chris Burks had one big game since callback three for four against the Phillies middle of July. He was on the United States national team eight years ago and was an All-American at Tennessee. In fact he had 400 in his college career 404. One and two the count to Chris. Here comes Kershaw curveball fouled away outside of third and Burke had to go down to get it. Following that big 12 to 6 break. So it's still one and two. Chris Burke was a first round pick by the Astros. It just shows you how tough it is to be a big leaguer. An All American hit over 400 in the career, first round pick, and it's been a struggle. The one and two pitch, and Burke takes inside at the thighs. Two and two the count. So Clayton Kershaw has not given up anything yet but he's struggling two and two the count to Burke two out runners at the corners and no score here in the second inning. Burke by the way has not done anything with runners in scoring position three for 30 two two pitch fastball fouled away So young Chris is still there when the Astros drafted Chris Burke there were those who thought he might be another. Craig Biggio but uh, that's putting a lot of pressure on him and those good things never materialized last year with the Astros he did have six home runs two and two the count Kershaw ready the left hander delivers high with a fastball so that's the fourth consecutive three ball count three and two to Reynolds three and two to Clark. Three and one to Snyder to walk him, and now three and two to Burke with Randy Johnson on deck. Clayton out of his stretch, looking for a big pitch, and it's a slow curve ball. Got him looking. There it was, the big pitch. The so Chris Burke tied up in knots as the kid fools him, and Manny Ramirez will be leading off. Bottom of the second, no score. No score bottom of the second inning Manny Ramirez Jeff Kent and James Loney a standing ovation excuse me for remembering but I went to a concert in Las Vegas many years ago and Barbara Streisand came out on the stage and got a huge standing ovation and she laughed and she said please I haven't done anything yet well. Manny hasn't done anything yet here at Dodger Stadium but he's been doing it in the big leagues for 16 years. The first time that Manny ever faced Randy Johnson was back in 1994 and Manny was 21 years old in his second year with the Indians. Well a lot of water has gone under the bridge and here he is now fastball on a one hopper to short. 
Stephen Drew throws to first and just like that be out before we had a chance to tell you the fact that he was hitting 244 against Johnson. He had five home runs against Johnson, 17 RBIs, but it goes into the book six to three. And one other note of irony, as Manny Ramirez was getting a standing ovation, you know the big deal that involved the Dodgers, the Pirates, and the Red Sox, and Jason Bay went to Boston, right? And Boston went into an extra inning game with the A's. And in the bottom of the 12th inning, Jason Bay tripled off the top of the Green Monster and scored the winning run on an infield single. And the Red Sox beat the A's 2-1, to one. Jason Bay brings home the winner. Andrew Jones sitting alongside Manny Ramirez and with one out Jeff Kent at the plate 0 and 1 the count. Randy into his wind up fastball is hitting the air to dead center and shallow coming up in a hurry is Chris Young and boy he can hurry. So a little fly ball for the second down. Manny Ramirez wearing 99 and we got to thinking about numbers. Joe Bimel with the Dodgers wears number 97, but there have been other players who wore 99. In fact, one is still wearing it. The Japanese outfielder So Taguchi, who was with the Cardinals and he's now with the Phillies. He wears 99. And you may remember the stormy petrol pitcher, Turk Wendell. He wore 99. Bimel 97. And the first pitch, Baloney is popped in the air. Drew goes out calling, waiting, and puts it away. So with a minimum number of pitches, four pitches, Randy Johnson retires the side. Kershaw took 28. And at the end of two, no score. Third inning, no score in the ball game. Randy Johnson will bring up that six foot ten inch strike zone. Clayton Kershaw's fastball is in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. For Randy Johnson, and you would expect it because of his long career and his size at 6'10, all kinds of physical problems. Strike one pitch swung on and missed. First of all, terrible knees. In fact, with bone on bone, a couple of years ago, he had to receive five injections of a lubricating gel just to cushion the friction of the bone on bone. And he takes inside one and two. And if that wasn't bad enough, then he had to have surgery with a herniated disc in his lower back. I mean, he's had some terrible times. The one two pitch is waved at, fly ball to shallow left, and Ramirez makes the catch. So Manny finally gets his first put out as a Dodger one away. You know, here's a deal on Dodger tickets, courtesy of New Era. You can save up to 60 percent on field box or infield reserve seats. See the Dodgers face the Phillies Wednesday August 13th the Brewers on the 17th the Rockies on the 19th. Log on to Dodgers.com forward slash E Saber and use the promo code ball cap CAP. Here's Stephen Drew runs to bunt drags it up along first Kershaw scoops throws and gets him on a bang bang play at first base. So Stephen Drew goes out one three and we have two down here in the third mm -hmm. inning and the center fielder Chris Young coming up. Nice effort by Clayton Kershaw for one moment it looked like he was going to try to shovel the ball out of his glove then he wisely transferred it and he was able to nip Stephen Drew. So two down third inning no score. For Kershaw, he gets two quick outs after making 28 pitches in the second inning. Young grounded a short in the first inning. Young shortstop moving to center field, right hand batter. Kershaw's fastball in for a strike. It's an old story, but at the same time, it just showed you how life is. Chris Young growing up in Houston along with James Loney, rivals in high school. Played against each other. Loney was a pitcher. Loney hit a ball. Chris Young collided with another outfielder. Broke his arm. So they go way back together and they're head to head. 
Chopper to the hole at short. Backhanded by Baroa, who cranks it over to first. And a nice, easy inning for Clayton Kershaw. A one, two, three. And at the end of two and a half innings, no score. Bottom of the third inning, no score in the ball game. Andrew Jones will be checking in, followed by Angel Baroa, and then Clayton Kershaw, who made only eight pitches in the last inning. So here's Andrew hitting 163. Johnson looks down to get a sign, and the first pitch is in for a strike, 0 and 1. Andrew Jones is six for 27. That's a 222 average against Johnson, but he does have three home runs against Randy. Johnson strike one pitch, a little slider outside corner. And as we've often said this year, it looks like Andrew Jones inherits an 0 and 2 count. And that's where Randy has him right now. No balls and two strikes. Johnson strike two, fastball is pulled foul down the left field line. So after two sliders, Randy came back with the swift one, and it's still 0-2. Jones followed by Baroa, then Kershaw. No score, bottom of the third. Kershaw certainly righted the ship. Six pitches in the first inning, 28 in the second, and then only eight pitches in the third. Randy, ready, strike two pitch coming up. Slider got him looking. So Andrew Jones had one fastball and fouled it off. The slider has just eaten him alive, although most of the time it's not the slider where he is caught looking. It's the slider that's usually down and dirty away. So Andrew Jones caught looking, three strikeouts for Randy Johnson, and the battle will be on Hell Barrow. It was way back in 1990, he was pitching for Seattle. And Randy Johnson, who starts Baroa with a slider, a little high, ball one. Randy had a no hitter against Detroit in June of 1990. The 1 0 pitch on the way is a fastball fouled off. After the game, you can imagine all the writers asking this young fella about his no hitter, and he said, Well, I credit the purchase of a set of drums. I played the drums before I came to the park, it seemed to settle me down. And he still has a set of drums to this day. One ball and one strike. Randy starts to go to a wind up, makes his movement, and then drops his arms to double check with Chris Snyder. The 1 1 pitch on the way, that's off the plate. Ball two and the count two and one. Randy Johnson, his dad was a World War II veteran and a police officer in Northern California. The 2 1 pitch on the way. Fastball fouled away. And Randy's father drilled into him. There was right, there was wrong, there was good, there was bad, there was success and failure, but no blurring, no gray area, no in between. That's the way he was brought up. Not a bad way to go. 2 2 pitch on the way. A slider, a comebacker, and Johnson must have lost it as the bat distracted him. A broken bat went right on by Randy Johnson and Baroa is going to wind up with a hit. It is really a tragedy what's happening to this game. The broken bat rolling to the right side of the mound and Randy unable to handle a little roller. So with one out a broken bat single and now the comparison. You have a 20 year old Clayton Kershaw. Born March the 19th, 1988. In 1988, Randy Johnson was pitching for the Montreal Expo. He was 25 years old. And he won three and did not lose any the same year that Clayton Kershaw was born. So one away. Johnson said, looks at Baroa. They look bunt, and the bunt is down. Coming in to get it is Tony Clark to record the out. So the Dodgers get a big break when Baroa breaks the bat, distracts Johnson, and now that will bring up Matt Kemp. Regular. So Kershaw does his job. Now Randy working on Kemp. 
I remember years ago interviewing Randy Johnson and the subject really was the fact that he is so tall. But when you talk to him about his height you realize he was very sad about it. And then when you think of course when you're a kid growing up the last thing you want is to stick out. I mean you don't want that at all. You want to be right down there with everybody else. Randy's pitch to Kemp is hit in the air to right field. Coming up is Burke. Makes a sliding, rolling catch because I think he lost the ball in the lights. Normally, he would make that catch running and trying to get under the lights, so to speak. He makes a great play, and at the end of three, no score. He beat the Cubs. Jeff Carson. Jeff Carson's very good there. Thank you. I just thought that was count, kind of a neat score. Outs. Yeah, you bet. The Brewers thought it was a neat story, too. I think the Brewers gained a game tonight after getting spanked four in a row. Nice pitch. Down he goes. No score in the ball game. And Manny Ramirez first at bat as a Dodger. He swung at the first pitch in the second inning and grounded to short. Meanwhile, there is a discussion, and they have made Randy Johnson remove a glove, a black glove, that had been on his right hand and wrist. Considered out of uniform. Bob Melvin is now asking why all the fuss? Why are you taking the black glove off? Joe Torrey is the one who started it. Joe went to the plate umpire Eric Cooper and said, That glove is a distraction. And then the umpire said to Randy, Take it off. And Randy tossed it over to the train. And Melvin is saying, Wow. I mean, here we are, fourth inning. And suddenly you're telling my pitcher to take the glove off. For all I know, it looked a little bit like a golf glove. I don't know whether it helps him uh, keep the glove on his hand or just why. There you can see it. It covered his wrist. And he finally just said, all right, got rid of it. So Randy now will be pitching to the Dodgers, Blake Martin and Ramirez. No score, fourth inning. Ball one. Randy, in the last inning, made 11 pitches. And the slider has really been a strikeout pitch to all three that he has. He has not had a three ball count. Eight of the 11 hitters, he has gotten a first pitch strike. And it's a one ball, one strike count to Casey Blake. Randy has won four straight. Fastball punched on the ground. Juggled by the old dog who throws him out anyway. A nice play by Orlando Hudson, who's about as busy a second baseman as there is in the business. He put out some assists and he flagged that thing down. Juggled, turned through, and got Casey Blake by a full step. So one away. So the old dog does the job. He also plays certain times the deepest second base of any second baseman in the league and of course that that increases his coverage right now he's maybe a foot out on the grass. Oh and one the count Russell Martin called out on strikes on the slider. Johnson has three and on deck Manny Ramirez. Fastball, little high. One and one the count to Russell. Don't forget, these two teams are not through with each other by Sunday night, not by a long shot. There'll be six more meetings left. August 29th, 30th, and 31st, the Dodgers will be in Arizona. September 5, 6, and 7, the D backs will be here. Two balls, one strike to Russell Martin. 
two and two. Randy of course has had a lot of strikeouts back in 1993 when he was with the Mariners he struck out over 300 and in 1999 he was just too big for the room when he came to the Diamondbacks fastball got him so slider got him first time fastball gets him a second in 2001 Randy Johnson struck out 372 batters and now he goes face to face head to head with Manny Ramirez a second time. Ramirez hit a fastball first pitch and grounded to short. Manny is 36 years old. Uh, yeah 36 years old. Ground foul and one. He was 36 the 30th of May. Originally signed in 1991 by the Indians. He went to George Washington High School in the Washington Heights area of New York. Same school attended by Al Campanis among many many others. Oh and one to Manny. People of course talking about him a great deal. Fastball, a one hopper by Stephen Drew. Though he has a base hit. So Manny hit a fastball for an out. Now a fastball for a base hit. And he gets another ovation from the crowd. And of course, even for a pro like Manny, it's good to get the first one. Yeah, there you go. Manny being Manny, as they say. Two out single, and the batter will be Jeff Kent. Drew tried to back up and backhand it, couldn't handle it. Hit number two of Randy Johnson. Jeff Kent flied to center in the second inning. Jeff Kent and Randy Johnson have certainly gone to the wars enough time. Kent came in hitting 171 against them. Ramirez over at first is certainly not known for stealing bases. He had one this year. He did not have any in 07 or 06. He had one in 05 and he had two in 04. So he's had four stolen bases in the last four years and of course his buddy Tony Clark holding them on. No score in the fourth each side with two hits. One ball and no strikes to Jeff Ken. By the way, one of the sidebar stories about Manny Ramirez would be his hair and the dreadlocks. When Joe Torrey managed the Yankees, remember Johnny Damon had to cut his hair. And Joe Bimel, let's say, had a trim when Joe arrived here. So now the discussion on the sidelines is will Manny get a haircut. We'll see. Two out fourth inning no score one ball and one strike to Jeff Kemp. Fastball hit down to the shortstop Drew. plenty of time to get Kemp. So no runs one hit a man left and at the end of four no score. Dodger baseball on FSN Prime ticket is brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work by the Lexus hybrids and the power of H and by the new prime rib six dollar burger served with grilled onions and horseradish sauce only at Carl's Jr. Fifth inning no score Chris Snyder followed by Chris Burke and then Randy Johnson no runs two hits for each side. Pretty good fastball that was at 91 but the location was great. Randy Johnson. Pitching a low pitch count and you can see him fussing with that. Right hand he's got a glove on but it's a white glove. And I guess that'll be OK. Slow curveball for a strike one and two. The glove 
he wore at the start of the game for about four innings was black. Although I would think the white glove would be more of a distraction really than the black glove in some ways. At least the the baseball would be outlined against the black glove. It'll be lost in the white glove but uh, I guess it's going to be OK. Two and two the count to Chris Schneider who drew the walk in the second inning. Foul back. Big crowd on hand. Hope you'll be with us. Include us in your plans. We repeat. There are still plenty of tickets for tomorrow night and Sunday afternoon. Tomorrow night, Yusmero Petit and Hiroki Kuroda. And then Sunday, the left-hander Doug Davis and tall Jason Johnson for the Dodgers. Ball three. It looked like Kershaw kind of overthrew that time to get it to 93. In May and June, the D-backs were hitting in the 230s. And in July, they really woke up offensively. Ground ball to Baroa. Throw one away here in the fifth inning. Well, how about an Aflac trivia question before Burke comes up? And here it is, somewhat appropriate. Manny Ramirez holds the all-time record for postseason home runs. Do you have any idea who holds the Dodger record? Well, we'll give the answer in a little while. We're in the fifth, no score. Burke struck out in the second inning. Runs up the bunt, ball one. Chris hitting 186. Playing in place of Alex Romero, a left handed batter who is hitting 258. And he smokes one into left center. Now let's see. If he tries for two, there he goes. In fact, the ball rolled all the way, and so he's going to keep on going. The throw by Baroa, he is in there. Boy, you talk about a leg triple. I mean, one minute we're thinking it might be two, and Manny Ramirez and Andrew Jones couldn't cut it off, either one. And so Chris Burke, a one out triple. A one hopper right by the shortstop. Here comes Manny. Here comes Andrew. And there goes Chris Burke. Baroa, the relay man, got it back in, but Burke in there with the triple. And for Chris, he has four doubles. That's his first triple. So the infield is up, one out. Randy at the plate, fly to left in the third. Right. On one. No runs, three hits for the D backs. No runs, two hits for the Dodgers. Outfield split. Jones plays a bit towards right center. That's a strike. No score. Johnson has three hits. He has three runs batted in. And he strikes out. Just about half the time. Oh, and two. Now back. Randy Johnson, with all of his physical problems, bad knees, terrible back, still plugging away successfully. 45 years old coming up. Chris Burke at third, no score, fifth inning. Fastball ties him up. Did he swing? Yes, says Darrell Cousins. Well, Randy just gives Cousins a look, another look, and walks away. So let's duck in that trivia question and answer. Remember? Talking about Manny Ramirez holding the all-time record for postseason home runs. Who holds the Dodger record? And the answer, Duke Snyder. The Duke. 11 postseason home runs. One of the 11 with the Los Angeles Dodgers. All the others with Brooklyn. One ball and no strikes to Stephen Drew. So it's a big at bat for Drew. Fouled out. Hit back to the box, 0 for 2, batting 271, 12 home runs, 42 runs batted in, and Burke at third. 
one and one. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the fifth inning, it'll be James Loney, Andrew Jones, and then Angel Barroa. Dodger outfield tonight, and the emphasis on tonight. Ramirez, Jones, and Kemp against left-hander Randy Johnson. Ball two on that slow curve. Of course, two very good ball players have to sit down for a while. Juan Pierre and Andre Ethier. Pierre hitting 283, Ethier 274, and Ethier with 11 home runs. Two and one. Fastball, two and two. And again, right there at 92 for a young Clayton Kershaw. Deuce is wild. Curve ball, and it's grounded to Loney. He'll take it to the bag, and the D-backs leave Burke. So they let Jackson at third in the second inning. They leave Burke at third in the fifth, and we're scoreless at the end of. A pitching duel, Randy Johnson, Clayton Kershaw, scoreless to the bottom of the fifth inning. And if you joined us a little late, Manny Ramirez made his debut. Hit the first pitch in the second inning, a fastball, and grounded out. In the fourth inning, got another fastball, and one hopped one by Stephen Drew for a base hit. So in the fifth inning, it'll be Loney, Jones, and Barroa against Randy Johnson, better known in the baseball world as the big unit. He's had that nickname since 1990. Actually, it was way back in July of 1990. In those days, he was with the Mariners, and it was Tim Raines who was the one who bumped into him and said, boy, you are one big unit, and everybody hooked onto it. And Loney, a base hit into right field to open up the fifth. You know, friends, Sunday when the Dodgers face Arizona, the first 15,000 fans, age 14 and under, receive the new Dodger Bear from Build a Bear Workshop. It's compliments of Farmer John. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com or call 866 Dodgers. So the Dodgers now have the same number of hits as the D backs, three. And here is Andrew called out on strikes in the third inning. In fact, three of Johnson's four strikeouts, the hitter has been caught looking. Slider off the plate, dropped by Snyder. Holding at first is Loney. Loney has stolen four, but he's been caught three. Held on by Tony Clark. So Andrew trying to move him along. Angel Barroa on deck. Slider in at the hand. 2 and 0 oh the count. So Andrew, as we mentioned earlier, when he came up in the third inning, it looked like he inherited a no ball, two strike count. Now he has the hitter's count. Two balls and no strikes. And he does have three home runs in the pass against Randy Johnson. Fastball, two and one. And he was guessing fastball. On Helboro on deck. Two and one. A lot of times with a lot of hitters, you'd say, well, they might be playing hit and run. But of course, Andrews had a lot of trouble making contact, so you would doubt hit and run here. Loney's not going. And fastball strike. A lot of the hitters tonight on both sides are shaking their heads at the plate umpire, Eric Cooper. They're not too happy. He's been up over nine years. Eric went to Iowa State. He was the home plate umpire when Hideo tossed the no hitter for Boston against Baltimore. And Andrew 
chases it not quite down and dirty but it was the same old story a slider down so Jones strikes out again five strikeouts for Randy Johnson look at the location now. down there so one out here's on hell Barroa five strikeouts for Randy in quest of win number 293. And that's going to be flared off first and go back into the stands. 0 and 1 to Baroa, hitting 206. Four runs batted in. Angel has done a wonderful job defensively. No one has ever compared his bat to Nomar's, and if you missed it, Nomar is on the DL. Pablo Osuna coming in late in the games. The sooner the later he usually finishes up for Jeff Kent. 0 and 1. Fastballs. All right. 0 and 2. Johnson, five strikeouts, no walks. Minimum number of pitches. He made uh, 41 pitches in the first four. Ten pitches an inning. Wow. And Clayton Kershaw on deck. 0 and 2. Earlier I was talking about that batting glove that Johnson wore. The white one. But he only wore that hitting. He's not wearing any glove on that right hand except the baseball glove. One and two the count. Baroa broke his bat in the third inning. I think the piece of bat that went as you look at the mound to the left side or to Randy's right and I think it distracted him confused him and he missed. A very easy comeback. A slider flared into right field. Foul. Still one and two. The slider that Randy Johnson throws now isn't anything like the slider he used to throw. He and Steve Carlton had two of the wickedest sliders I have ever seen. To right hand hitters, it looked like the kind of a pitch. If you took it, it would break your ankle. And if you swung and missed, it would break your ankle. It was hellacious. One and two. Fastball fouled away. Randy Johnson, six wins and no losses in his career here at Dodger Stadium. And his earned run average here. Before tonight, 2.2. One ball and two strikes. Fast ball. That's hit down the line. Coming over is Burke, but it's going to wind up in the stands. Chris going into a slide, but it came right to the fan. One and two the count to Angel Moroa. You have Loney at first, one out, fifth inning, no score. And since he is on everyone's tongue right now, Manny Ramirez rounded to short and single to left. The single to left was a one hopper that just skipped on by Stephen Drew's efforts. So Manny is one for two as a Dodger. One and two to Baroa. Another foul. Go on hell kind of wearing Randy out a little bit. Randy's fastball has been under 90. Baroa has fouled off five. It's a seven pitch at bat. And a one ball two strike count. Yeah that was another thing naturally. I mean go way back when he first came up with the Expos and the Mariners. He threw very, very small baseballs and threw them in such a hurry. One and two. Two and two. Fastball away. Randy, of course, went to school at USC. 
Oh, a former Trojan. And a slider fouled away. Give you an idea of Randy Jackson if you turn the clock back about 15 years. He was a 200 strikeout pitcher, but he did it in 173 innings. Two and two. And held out of the box, no pitch. Two balls, two strikes, one out, fifth inning, no score. Loney at first. And that's going to be hit at Hudson. He throws to first. Double play. Loney arguing with Daryl Coven that he was back on the bag. Mariano Duncan now exchanging some words with the first base umpire. Here comes Joe Torrey. No score at the end of five. Whoops. No score. Through five, Mariano Duncan arguing with first base umpire Daryl Cousins and was ejected. It was a line drive to Hudson, the throw back to Clark, just ahead of the left hand of James Loney on the bag. Mariano didn't see it that way. There's Loney diving back. Can't really see. There you have it. The glove has the ball in the hand, hadn't reached it yet. From where Mariano stood, he thought it was not a double play and Daryl Cousins immediately kicked him out. Joe Torrey went out to calm everything down but Duncan's been ejected. Meanwhile Chris Young a strike and the count 0 and 1. Young Hudson and Jackson in that order. Young twice ground balls to short. One and one. Randy Johnson had to work harder in the fifth inning than any other inning even though only faced three batters. He made 18 pitches 10 pitches to Angel Barroa. One and two to Chris. Just a few nights ago remember Casey Blake and Joe Torrey kicked out of a game. Things are warming up. Slow curveball just missed. Mm. 72 mile an hour dandy. Two and two the count. Another curve ball hit down to Blake. One away. For the D-backs, they have three hits. They had a double by Connor Jackson in the second to lead off and they wasted it left him at third. Then they had a single by Mark Reynolds with two out in the fourth inning and then a one out triple by Chris Burke and they couldn't get him home. So Melvin has been shot out and the same for Joe Torrey for the Dodgers. They had Baroa break his bat and get an infield single. They left him at second. They had Ramirez single with two out. He didn't go anywhere. And then Loney singles and is doubled up. Tried to throw a curve, it didn't happen. Two and all the count. The O dog grounded out twice. The first time was very close, and it looked like he hurt himself. He hit the bag awfully hard, but he stays in there. Two and one. Clayton Kershaw. Doing a great job against a great pitcher. Fastball and whoa, that got the plate umpire Eric Cooper. Fortunately, in the mask, he's all right. You know, we were talking before about Cooper, the plate umpire, when Hideo Nomo pitched his no hitter against Baltimore. 
He also worked Cal Ripken Jr.'s last major league game. So he's been there for a couple of rather huge historic moments. Two and two to the old dog, Orlando Hudson. Fastball. And Kershaw hits 92, so he's still throwing hard. Same velocity throughout the game. Hudson, 30 years old, out of Darlington, South Carolina. Grounds one up the middle. Kent behind the bag, but he can't get it. Jeff, of course, has got a bad back. He's not about to really get down on a ball like that. So it's a single up the middle with one out. And Connor Jackson coming up. That's only the fourth hit surrendered by Clayton Kershaw. No score in the ball game. Just did not come up for Jeff. So now with Hudson at first, we'll see what Bob Melvin does. Hudson doesn't steal a lot. He has stolen four out of five. And we thought he hurt his leg in the first inning. Connor doubled and fly to right. Bounce the curveball, chest blocked by Russell Martin, one ball and no strikes. He throws that big 12 to 6. All you have to do is to look at your watch and you can see the kind of a spin he gets on that curveball. One ball and no strikes. And he's going to go over. Dodgers have gotten one man to second base. That was Baroa in the third inning. The D backs have gotten two men to third. And we're scoreless. One out in the sixth. Fastball missed. 2-0 oh the count. Seventy three pitches in the first five innings for Clayton Kershaw. Hudson. 2-0 oh the count. Taking a good long look at Kershaw's move. Two and one the count to Connor Jackson. Jackson with 12 home runs, 56 runs batted in. Born in Austin, Texas, lives there, but he was raised here. Went to the University of California, Berkeley, and went to high school in the Valley. Big chopper to Blake. He goes down to Kent. They get one. Jeff turns it with a bounce, and Roney can't handle it. One reason. Kent went down as the old dog went in there and Jeff's throw on a bounce Loney couldn't handle it. There's Jeff doing a split. No error for the simple reason you can never anticipate a double play. That's one of the oldest rules in the scorer's book. So it's a force play. Two down. Hudson made a pretty good effort to make sure Kent couldn't turn it with a straight throw. And here's Mark Reynolds. And he hits a drive to right, but Kemp has a lot of room, and Matt puts it away. No runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of five and a half, no score. No score in the ball game as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning because it is his day because of all the rhubarb surrounding him. We thought we'd put our freeze cam on Manny Ramirez. So take a look at Manny's day. And with that, we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and Juan Pierre is coming up to bat for Clayton Kershaw. Clayton made 89 pitches, 
He matched Randy Johnson for sure. And he goes out scoreless in the sixth. Juan Pierre is five for 30 against Randy Johnson. That would be a 167 batting average. Oh, and one to one. They have to shorten up. Both Tony Clark and Mark Reynolds look bunt. Ground ball. Oh, dog. Juggles, 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 forgets it. He's been juggling them. So Pierre reaches on what should have been an out. A runner at first, nobody out. Ball hit him right in the glove, then ran up his arm and his armpit. Wasn't a bad hop or anything. It, it took a bad hop off his glove. And it's going to be an error, which is the way it should have been. So Pierre makes a difference by reaching. And now let's see how important that is. You have a rabbit loose out there looking at Randy Johnson, who's looking at the rabbit. Pierre has 36 stolen bases, pretty far back of Willie Tavares, and one ahead of Jose Reyes. So Matt Kemp struck out, hit a looping fly ball, a wonderful running catch by Chris Burke in right field. Ball one. Randy made 59 pitches in five innings, made only four pitches in the second inning. One ball and no strikes. The art of being a successful major league pitcher. You have the hitter threatening you at the plate, and you have a very skilled and knowledgeable base runner at first base. Randy's last three games, he has not had to make a lot of pitches. And they got Pierre picked off. Down to second, and it goes into left field. Bad throw by Tony Clark. So the D backs make a huge mistake. Tony had him dead to rights, threw it into left field. However, remember. Pierre was moving on the pickoff, so he's going to be credited with a stolen base. Even though the throw should have had him beaten, but it went behind Stephen Drew. So a huge break now. An error followed by a gift. Tony Clark makes a bad play. So Kemp Blake and Martin now trying to pick him up. For Bob Melvin, he has to grit his teeth here. For Matt Kemp, he has one sacrifice, one. And of course, Clayton Kershaw could profit by the run if they can get it. One ball and no strikes. Slider, one and one. It's not that crisp, hard slider he used to have, but it's still a slider. And a one ball, one count strike. No runs, four hits for the D-backs. One error, that by Orlando Hudson. One and one. Pass ball away. That runs the count to two and one. Juan Pierre at second base on an error. And what would be credited as a stolen base. Two and one tonight. Fourth straight game. 
And now five really tough one. Slider hitting the left field base hit. So here comes the man who should have been out. And not only do the Dodgers lead, but Matt Kemp has a stand-up double, and it is one to nothing Dodgers. Orlando Hudson gives it away. Tony Clark throws it away. And Matt Kemp puts it away. And it's 1 0 Dodgers here in the sixth inning. For Randy Johnson, a very tough inning. And Matt now at second base, nobody out. And the batter is Casey Blake. For Kemp, by the way, 58 runs batted in and a 19 game hitting streak. Fastball on one. Fastball not up to 90 in the high 80. And it was the slider that Matt Kemp whacked into left field. Chad Qualls begins to loosen up in the D back bullpen. Johnson is due to bat fourth when the D backs come up in the seventh inning. Blake with Russell Martin on deck. Fastball for a strike. 0 oh and 2. Blake has grounded to third, grounded to second. Scores are really something in these games. 8-7, 3-2, 6-5, 2-1. Now tonight one nothing and two more to go tomorrow night use Mero Petit the rookie Corota Sunday Doug Davis the left hander Jason Johnson who has pitched so well be on the mound for the Derby. Oh and two fastball one and two. After Sunday's game, the Dodgers go out to St. Louis and San Francisco and then come home to dig in against a very, very good Phillies team for four. Milwaukee trying to pick up the pieces, having been recently swept by the Cubs, and then the Rockies. Time, new ball put in play. So waste not, want not. The D-backs left Jackson at third in the second. They left Burke at third in the fifth. Clayton Kershaw hung tough, and now suddenly he is leading one nothing, albeit he's out of the game. One and two to Casey Blake. In at the hands, two and two. Russell Martin waiting on deck and you can bet he's going over mentally all of the pitches. Martin struck out on a slider in the first inning and struck out on a fastball in the fourth. Well Russell deep in thought two and two to count to Casey Blake. A dancing Kemp at second and of course Randy has to worry about Matt. Kemp has stolen 26 out of 34. And with the right hand, Mark Reynolds deep guarding the line, the door is slightly open on the left side. Two and two. Ball three. One four straight. He had gone 20 consecutive scoreless innings until the D back just messed up on him. The error by Hudson, the bad throw by Tony Clark. And this now his first three ball count. Got him. The pretty good slider puts Casey Blake on the shelf. Six strikeouts for Randy Johnson. He can still snap it off. I think he really reached back to get a little something extra on that play. 
So one out runner at second and the batter Russell Martin and now it'll be very interesting to see the pitch sequence how he handles Martin and how Martin tries to adjust on deck Manny Ramirez. Check swing, swing, says Daryl Cousins. 0 and 1. That was a slider, not as hard a slider at all that he threw to Blake, but it slid enough. 0 and 1. Russell hitting 295. And Randy with one eye on Matt Kemp. Slider lined the left field right into the glove of Connor Jackson. So Martin looking for it, got it, hit it right on the screws, lines to left, and here comes Manny Ramirez, who is one for two, single to left. Ramirez has hit two fastballs. One he hit a hopper to Drew, the other was a hopper went by Drew. So for Randy Johnson, who went to USC, who once worked on the Daily Trojan, the college newspaper, as a photographer. And you can bet Randy gets the picture on this one. On deck, Jeff Kent. Fastball. 0 and 1. Manny chasing one down and dirty. No balls, one strike. He was hitting 244 against Johnson coming into the game, and he's one for two. One and one. Mariano Duncan was kicked out of the ball game, so the Dodgers' first base coach is Don Mattingly. And over a third, Larry Boa. One nothing Dodgers. Two out six inning. Johnson versus Ramirez. Manny has 17 RBIs against Randy Johnson over the years. Check swing, roll a wide. Johnson a little late covering, and Manny will beat it out. A throw to third. Now they have Kemp in a rundown. Snyder with the ball gives it to Drew, who tags him out. So Manny Ramirez on a check swing fooled everybody, but could have had a base hit, and Kemp is run down. At the end of six, one nothing Dodgers. It has been another very tough ball game between these two. Manny Ramirez credited with a single in his last at bat, also single to left field in the fourth inning. So Manny goes two for three in his debut. Clayton Kershaw matched up against Randy Johnson, pitched an outstanding six inning, scoreless, allowing four hits. And so now we turn the page and move to the seventh, and Chan Ho Park takes over. It'll be Tony Clark, followed by Chris Snyder, and then Chris Burke. Chan Ho with a record of four and two, learning and making the difficult transition from a starting pitcher to a reliever. Strike to Clark, off speed breaking ball. So Tony has to feel badly. Orlando Hudson has to feel terrible as they gave the Dodgers a run in the sixth inning. 
And he drives one to dead center. Back goes Andrew, and that's how badly he felt. Tony Clark hits it over the center field fence to tie it up. Boom. The Chan Ho Park gives up the home run. Third home run for Tony Clark. And for Chan Ho Park, that would be the ninth home run that he has allowed. So Tony to help to give it away comes right back to take it back got a fastball down and just hit it over the center field fence his third home run of the year Jones going back but never had a shot so it's 1 1 you have to remember too about these two teams this is the tenth meeting and of the previous nine five have been decided by one run that's a strike to Snyder 0 and 1. So a 1 1 tie in the seventh. You saw Orlando Hudson shake his hand. They're both relieved over that home run. That's a strike. 0 oh 2 to Snyder. Walked, grounded to short. 0 oh for 1. So a big Tony. Hits it out. Of course, like Randy Johnson, he'd been around a long time. Hit as many as 34 home runs. One and two the count. For the record for Tony Clark just to look it up three home runs this year that gives him two hundred and forty seven in his career and he's been up in the big leagues since 1995 36 years old so Randy Johnson is even we'll see whether he bats here in the seventh inning two and two. Snyder will be followed by Chris Burke and then Randy Johnson would be due up after that. We'll see. Two balls, two strikes. And that's going to be hit in the left field coming up with Manny, but it's going to drop for a base hit. So a home run followed by a single. And Chris Burke looking at the dugout for a sign as he comes up. And I'm sure Chris was also wondering whether they were going to switch. With perhaps Alex Ramiro, a left hand batter. Kirk Gibson hollering down the length of the Arizona dugout. Randy's got the hard hat on and the bat, but there's a lot of folks moving around. So we'll see. Augie Ojeda has a bat, a helmet, and now he's getting ready to come out on deck. So here is Burke struck out and tripled. And ball one. So for Clayton Kershaw, his brilliant six innings go up in smoke as far as a win. A 1 1 tie here in the seventh. Dodgers still look bunt. Chris Snyder, the big catcher, doesn't figure to be doing any running. He has not been involved in a stolen base all year. Game number 109. And that's a strike. One and one. Chris Burke has sacrificed once this year and they're asking him to do it again or at least they have been Lee Tinsley and Chip Hale the coaches and Bob and Alvin at the helm one and one showing bunt again but they'll keep an eye on Snyder 
One run, six hits for the D-backs. One run, five hits for the Dodgers. D-backs have hit for the cycle. They've had singles, a double, a triple, and a home run for one. One and one. No chip hail. Hanging out a sign with all that maneuvering. Snyder reading it at first. Burke at the plate. One ball and one strike. He's still showing bunt. Got it down. Loney juggles, gets a grip, fires to Kent. So the sacrifice works. With one out, Snyder at second. Augie Ojeda was on deck, and now they call him back. Chad Tracy is going to come up in bat, and Augie was not in the game. So here comes Chad. Chad Tracy, by the way, hitting 297, half a dozen home runs, 29 runs batted in. A totally different hitter than Augie Ojeda. Chad's out of Charlotte, North Carolina. He's 28. Went to East Carolina University. And we were talking about Randy Johnson's knees bone on bone. He had the same thing. And they had to inject Chad with that synthetic gel to relieve the pressure. Slow and in there for a strike. 0 and 1. Tracy played last night, went 0 for 4, did not hit the ball out of the infield, and struck out. D backs have been playing very well on the road and at home of late. On this road trip, they've won six out of seven. And since the end of June, they've won 10 out of 15. Before that, Bob Melvin's club was 5 and 12. So they got off to a great start, then slowed down, and now it appears like they're building up again. That's a cracked bat, foul ball. Chad will have to get another. You could hear that thing crack for sure. So Tracy hitting for Johnson, trying to break a 1 1 tie. D backs have had ample opportunities. They left Jackson at third in the second, they left Burke at third in the fifth. Now a home run, a single, and they have a runner at second with one out. And Stephen Drew on deck. One ball, two strikes to Chad Tracy. Chad Tracy, a couple of years ago, chosen for the Futures game. Because he led the Pacific Coast League in hits. He had a big year five years ago. So he made the big club the next year. Been with the D-backs five years. Two and two the count. Tracy, a very quiet man. Fellas on the ball club say he rarely shows any emotion. Not too easy to read. There's a lot of jump rope. And it, the agility drills really helped his footwork around first base. Hopped in the air foul. There will not be a play. Well, it's still two and two. Tracy, in a sense, takes a page out of the Ted Williams book on how to hit. First of all, it's the expression, know thyself. You know your strike zone. You know the sweet spot where you really want the ball. You know the spots where they make you make out. So you walk up there and you are looking for the pitch in the sweet spot. If the pitcher gets two strikes on you, well, good for him. Now you just have to fight for your life. But Tracy's theory was looking for that one pitch. Now, of course, two strikes. Another story. Two and two. Of course, it's easy to make it sound easy like Ted Williams did. But if you were a kid playing this game now, you you just sit there and think of yourself at home plate saying to the pitcher I want it right here 
and so when you come to the plate that's the spot where you're looking for the pitch but you had better hit it instead of taking it if it arrives. Well Chad's hitting 297 so his hitting theory is paid off. But as we said now two balls two strikes. He's just trying to hit anything. And ball three. Chan Ho came in Tony Clark hit a home run to tie it up. Snyder single. Burke sacrifices. On deck is Drew and he has his hands full with Tracy. Three and two the count. Off speed and high. Ball four. So Tracy draws a walk. First and second with one out. And the batter will be Drew in an anxious moment for Rick Honeycutt. He's checking on the whereabouts of Joe Bimel. How's he doing? Well, Joe is up. Waiting for a call. Here comes Joe Torrey, and there's the call. The one Joe calling in the other with two on, one out, seventh inning in a 1 1 tie, and we'll be back. Dodger Baseball on FSM Prime Ticket is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Fees don't fly with us. Visit Southwest.com. And by your Southern California Chevy dealer. Visit SoCalChevy.com. D-backs and the Dodgers tied up 1-1. Top of the seventh inning. Tony Clark with his arms folded. Got rid of the bad thought of throwing that ball away when they had Pierre picked off. He got rid of it by hitting a home run leading off the inning. And a note, that home run hit by Tony Clark is the first home run allowed by the Dodger pitching staff in nine games. And the run charged to Chan Ho Park was the first run allowed by the Dodger bullpen in 18 and a third innings, the equivalent of two games. The 1-1, one -one, and now here is Bimel facing Stephen Drew. Two on, one out, 1-1. One -one. And that's probably hit down the right field line in the corner. It's going to land. Fair ball. One run is in, and they will hold Tracy at third. Kent was all set to pull the trigger on the foul line. So Stephen Drew, a fly ball double to right to drive in a run, and the D backs take a two to one lead. You know what's interesting about Joe hated. Bimel Chris this year? And that run, by the way, is charged to Chan Ho. Right handers are hitting 276 against Bimel, but he was brought in to face a left hander, and left handers were hitting 295 against him. The other thing about Joe, he is not allowed an earned run in the daytime, but at night his ERA is over three. So Bimel pitches to Drew, gives up the double. And in comes Corey Wade, and we'll be back. Last night, the Diamondbacks scored two runs in the seventh inning after the Dodgers had scored one in the sixth. And would you believe deja vu? The Dodgers scored a run in the bottom of the sixth tonight, and the D-backs have come back with two in the seventh. Randy Johnson has a shot at winning his ninth. He certainly now has an unblemished record. He was 6 and 0 oh at Dodger Stadium, so he can't lose. Chad Tracy is at third. Stephen Drew is at second. One out. The Dodgers must play the infield up. Chris Young is 0 for 3. All ground balls against Kershaw, but now facing Corey Wade. Breaking ball, 0 and 1. Chris Young had a wonderful rookie year when he had 30 home runs, 25 RBIs. Signed a big contract when the Dodgers were in Arizona earlier this year, and has been struggling ever since, hitting 234. But he does have 14 home runs, 54 runs batted in. One and one. Two runs, seven hits for the D-backs, one run, five hits for the Dodgers.
Kershaw, Park, Bimel, and now Wade. One and one. Infield up, second and third. Foul back. If you're wondering about Wade, perhaps walking young to load the bases with one out, a couple of good reasons. Hudson switches, of course, so he would bat left handed. With runners in scoring position, Young is hitting only 228. Hudson is hitting 359. Chased a bad ball. So they went right after him. And it was a smart move. Young goes 0 for 4. And now the Dodgers have to look out. Hudson will turn around and hit left handed. When you look at his numbers, Came into the game hitting 273 right handed and 324 left. The so first base open with Connor Jackson on deck. Two to one D backs for the Dodgers. It could be worse. And ball one. Home run, single, walk, double, and a big strikeout for Chris Young. Young, by the way, has struck out a hundred and thirteen times. Off speed, two and oh. Ball three. One thing for sure, Hudson is a far better hitter left handed than right. 50 points higher. He has three times as many home runs from this side, and big Connor Jackson waits on deck. Three and old count. A strike, three and one. Jackson in the past, one for one. Against Wade. Three and one to Hudson, who is 0 for 1 in the past against Wade. Two to one D back, seventh inning, two out. Curveball, and it's hit to Kent. So the big out was to strike out Chris Young. Then get Hudson to roll out so Wade does his job, but the D backs get two and lead two to one. Ah, oh, great pictures in the crowd. Folks singing, take me out to the ball game, having a wonderful time. Don't eat your dad's cap. <laughs> Friday night fever and a dandy of another ball. Well, now there's the wealthiest guy in town, right? Two to one D backs bottom of the seventh inning. That's the best seat in the house. And we go to the bottom of the seventh. Arizona takes a one run lead. And the Dodgers now will have Kent Loney and Jones facing the right hander Chad Qualls. He's from Lomita. Went to school at the University of Nevada and grew up as a Dodger fan. And here he is trying to put out their lights. Ball one. Chad, a big man, well put together. He's 6'5, 220. Originally drafted by the Astros and just came over to D backs this year. 1 0. Oh. Fastball. 1 and 1 to Jeff Kent. Fly to center, grounded to short. <laughs> Kent going through the pitches, I'm sure, in his mind. Falls, throws pretty hard. Fast ball that's been clocked in the middle 90s. Slider changeup and has a splitter as well. One and one. Lifted foul down the right field line, out of play. Falls on paper doesn't look very good. Two wins and seven losses. Strikeout to walk ratio close, but not quite three to one.
Chad pitching from the stretch with the bases empty. Good fastball. Perfect spot. So down goes Kent. He goes 0 for 3. One out in the seventh inning. Right now the pitches of record are Randy Johnson to win and Ken Hope Park to lose, but we're only in the seventh. The batter is James Loney. Popped to short and single to right. Boy, that's a wild delivery, isn't it? One ball and no strikes to count. Chad Qualls came here in a very big move for the D-backs. One and one to Loney. It was December of last year, and the Diamondbacks sent Jose Valverde with his 48 saves last year to the Astros. And they got Qualls, Chris Burke, and Juan Gutierrez. At the strike, one and two. Qualls in January signed a one year deal. Manny making his own mental notes. First look at the National League. Two and two. That's one of the things they say about Manny Ramirez. He is a great student of hitting. I mean, he spends hours. They say that in Boston, there were times he would take BP at 7 o'clock in the morning for a night game. And he would take BP at 7 o'clock at night after a day game. I mean, he works so much harder than you might think. Foul ball, still two and two. And I had someone describe him, and uh, perhaps it's pretty accurate. I don't know him, but someone who does said he is a hitting savant. I mean, he is superbly gifted to hit. Talking to Scott Proctor. Two and two. Comebacker right through the legs. On it is Drew to make the play. So a good play by Stephen Drew. Two out in the seventh inning. You know, Tuesday, August 12th, that's Joe Bimel Bobblehead Night at Dodger Stadium. First 50,000 fans that come to see the Dodgers and the Phillies at 710 receive a Joe Bimel Bobblehead. Winner of the fans vote, compliments of Bank of America. Visit Dodgers.com or call 866 Dodgers today. Andrew Jones struck out twice against Randy Johnson. Oh, and one. Andrew Jones against Chad Qualls, one for four in the past. One and one. D backs two runs, seven hits. Dodgers one run, five hits, and just like last night. Dodgers got a run in the sixth. D backs got two in the seventh, starting with the home run by Tony Clark. 248 home runs in his career. Foul ball out of play, so it'll give us a chance. When Tony hit that home run over the center field fence, they give him 248. That tied him with Ted Simmons for 12th spot on the all time home run list for switch hitters. Number 249, Jose Valentin, who's on top, you know, Mickey Mantle, 536. Slider, check swing, no swing. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Foul back. When the D-backs come up in the eighth inning, they'll have Connor Jackson, Mark Reynolds, and Tony Clark.
Gad Quarles trying to hold on to this one, leading two to one. Little ground ball to third. Nice hop for Mark Reynolds. That'll be that. So Jones goes 0 for 3. Dodgers go 1, 2, 3. And at the end it's 7, 2 to 1. Seventh inning, it was one to nothing Dodgers, thanks to a bad throw by Tony Clark, but then he put on a great swing and cleared the center field wall. Can Hope Park giving up the tying run, and then Chris Snyder singled a walk to Chad Tracy with one out, and Stephen Drew doubled in Snyder, and it's two to one in favor of Arizona. The last four have been decided by one run. 8 7 3 2 6 5 2 1 and now here we are 2 1 again. Ball one to Connor Jackson. This is the tenth meeting between the two teams. And it could very well be six of the ten decided by one run. Fouled away. Connor Jackson double the left. They left him. Fly to right and hit into a force play. Connor Jackson, somewhat of a rare hitter, ball two. Connor has walked more than he has struck out. Walked 44 times and struck out only 38 times. That is really special. And he lifts a fly ball. Here comes Manny. So one out in the eighth inning. And Mark Reynolds will be coming up. Not to really put a dead body at the doorstep of Mark Reynolds, but on the heels of Connor Jackson. 44 walks, 38 strikeouts. You have Reynolds. 43 walks, 132 strikeouts. 0 and 1. Reynolds hitting 249, and Jackson hitting about 70 points higher than that. 1 and 1. D backs two, Dodgers one, top of the eighth inning. Kershaw, Park, Bimel, and Wade, Johnson and Qualls. Off speed, nice pick by Casey Blake to get him. The Reynolds losing a hit, Casey Blake flashing to his left. Two out in the eighth. We paid attendance tonight, and as we told you, a note early in the day. From 1 p.m. yesterday until 4 p.m. today, the Dodgers sold 11,000 tickets. So a sellout tonight, 55,239. And the reason we started at 1 p.m. selling tickets, that was the hour when the Dodgers found that they had Manny Ramirez. So 55239. A lot of coverage here tonight, and not so much for the game, but the human interest of Manny Ramirez. Writer from the New York Times is here. Writer from Boston. Dan Shaughnessy is here. I'm sure a great deal of interest in Boston. But how about the note tonight? Remember, there were three teams involved in the deal that got Manny here. Jason Bay from Pittsburgh went to Boston and in an extra inning game tripled off the green monster and then scored the winning run. How about that to break in with the Red Sox. Not that he's going to replace Manny but uh, what a story. Jason Bay. Young fella out of Canada. Tony way out in front. Interesting that he hit the home run in the seventh inning because he had a very poor at bat in the fourth against Kershaw. His home run was against Chan Ho Park. One and two. Tony's hitting 223. Oh yeah, he badly fooled. 
However, he hit the home run when it counted. And at the end, it's seven and a half, two to one, D back. He stands six feet tall, weighs 200 pounds, has 510 career home runs, owns two World Series rings, and now he's a Dodger. A footnote on Rammy. We told you about uh, 11,000 tickets sold starting 1 p.m. until 4 p.m. today. They also report 30,000 tickets were sold for tonight and the other games remaining since the announcement of the trade. So star power, star draws, we have a sellout. Meanwhile, if Manny thinks he's big, he was always looking at Randy Johnson. Now he's going to look at the biggest guy in baseball, John Roush, out of Louisville, Kentucky. He is 6 feet 11. Originally signed by the White Sox and came over to Arizona from the Washington Nationals. Pinch hitting Andre Ephier. And this is so much like last night. The Dodgers scored in the sixth last night. The D backs scored two in the seventh last night. The Dodgers had Ephier and Sweeney bat last night. They're going to bid now. Same exact story. So Ethia hitting for Baroa, Sweeney will hit for Wade. By the way, and especially for youngsters, bless them, they're always so curious. You look at a fellow like John Roush at 6'11", and you say, my goodness, what's the, uh, what's, and who is the biggest man who ever lived? Well, we have irrefutable evidence, I think. His name was Robert Pershing Wadlow. He was born in Alton, Illinois in February of 1918. He stood 8 feet 11.1 inches tall. 8'11". Uh, And Ethia draws a walk. Last night he had a base hit, so the time runs aboard. Sweeney coming up. The sad thing about Robert Pershing Wardlow, when he passed away, he was only 22 years old. He had a brace on his right ankle. It caused a blister, and eventually it led to his death. Not too grisly to conclude. He was buried in a coffin that was 10 feet 9 inches long, 32 inches wide, 30 inches deep. So he was the biggest man recorded. All right, here's Sweeney, runner at first, nobody out, eighth inning, two to one D backs. Ball one. Mark Sweeney showing bun. He does not have a sacrifice this year. Last night in a similar situation, eighth inning, following Ethier's base hit, Sweeney single. If nothing else, he shortened up Mark Reynolds at third. Two to one D backs, bottom of the eighth. Ethier has stolen three and he's been caught twice. John Rausch will be 30 the 27th of September. Went to school at Moorhead State in Kentucky. That's a strike one and one. Roush among other things likes tattoos. And he has a number of them. He's got Olympic rings on an ankle. He was on the gold medal team in Sydney. He has Roman numerals starting at his neck and going down his spine commemorating his wedding day. Well, that's an interesting one. His wedding day, September the 7th, 2001. He has Chinese symbols. They mean tall fire. And then he had a little girl Aubrey Elizabeth 
So he got her footprints and her name and birthday and they were put on his right calf. One and two. Check swing. Right three. The Sweeney unable to hold up on a fastball up and out of the zone. One away. Now the battle will be Matt Kemp. Fastball really taken off up there. Big John's fastball has been clocked anywhere from 90 to 95. Curveball, slider, and a pretty good changeup. And of course, he has to be very intimidating standing on a 10 inch mound looking down at the hitter. And here's Matt Kemp. Score right. Kemp struck out, flied out to shallow right, a good tumbling, rolling catch by Chris Burt, and then doubled into the left field corner to drive in Juan Pierre to tie up the game in the sixth inning. Fouled away, 0 oh and 2. Boy, when when Roush comes over the top, you talk about pitching downhill. You can just imagine. I mean, he's 6'11, standing on the 10 inch mound. And there you are waiting, and he's right on top of you. Mm. That was a breaking ball fouled off. 0 oh and 2 the count. He struck Sweeney out on a high fastball. Fastball high and Kemp wouldn't bite. Two and two. Uh, check me one and two. On deck, Casey Blake. Two to one, D back, bottom of the eighth. Drop that breaking ball in. Matt Kemp can't believe the call. Oh my gosh. And Matt walks away. That looked like a big 12 to 6 job. It's up there and then it dropped right in. I think Matt thought it was outside. You saw him gesture with his left hand. And when Eric Cooper caught, see that? Oh no, that's outside, he said. Two down in the eighth inning. And the batter, Casey Blake. Fastball hit in the air. Starting back was Young, but he comes in now. And that'll be that. No runs, no hits, a man left. And at the end of eight, D backs two, Dodgers one. It's push again, shove again. Arizona leading the Dodgers two to one. The difference in the game occurred in the seventh inning. Snyder had singled. He was sacrificed to second. And Joe Bimel delivered to Stephen Drew, who doubled just inside the line. In fact, he thought it was foul at first. He settles for the double, and that broke the 1 1 tie. Andre Ethier, who walked as a pinch hitter, stays in the game in right field. Pablo Osuna takes over at shortstop for Angel Baroa. And it is a rare game indeed that Jonathan Broxton comes in in the ninth inning with the Dodgers losing. The so Big John will pitch to Snyder, Burke, and then we'll see about Roush. Fastball. Hit the deep short, long throw, but as soon as gets it over there, one away. Now let's see. You have Manny Ramirez. He's due up second in the ninth inning, and here is Bob Melvin's choice. If I stay with Roush, Manny is one for one a home run. If I bring in Brandon Lyon, Manny's two for three with a home run against him. Uh, if you're Bob Melvin, we will see your decision. And Brandon Lyon is getting ready in the bullpen. Here's Chris Burke. First ball swinging, fly ball to Ethier.
Two down top of the ninth. Roush is due up and Alex Romero left hand hitting outfielder will be coming up. Romero played last night's game and went two for three uh, with Kershaw starting tonight. He stayed in the dugout until now. So Romero hitting for Bird. Uh, check me on that. Uh, Romero hitting for Rouse. Sorry. 0 and 1. Rouch, while he was in there, made 14 pitches. 1 and 1. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the ninth, Martin, Ramirez, and Kent. 2 to 1, Arizona. One and two to Alex Romero, who no doubt will stay in the game, finish up in right field. He's from Venezuela. He'll be 25 in September. D backs got him on waivers from Minnesota. One and two. Breaking ball, two and two. Ramirez, he's done it each time. He hits his helmet with the bat. Two balls, two strikes. Poke foul. And he hits himself again. I think he's held, he's hit his helmet four times. Not in anger. It's almost as if the helmet's loose and he hits it to tighten it around his head. Plays a little flute at the end of the bat, too. Two and two. Outfield shaded around the left. There you go. He did it. I was hoping he'd do it on camera. He finally. <laughs> They all have their own traits, don't they? Three and two to count to Alex Romero. Fastball lifted to Manny. There you go. All right, we are heading for the bottom of the ninth inning. Russell Martin, Manny Ramirez, and Jeff Kent against Brandon Lyon. Bottom of the ninth inning, Arizona and the Dodgers in yet another one run game. Arizona leading two to one. Brandon Lyon was a teammate of Manny Ramirez in 2002 and 2003. They were teammates with the Boston Red Sox and now in a moment they'll be going head to head. Manny is two for three with a home run against Lyon. And as far as career regular season walk off home runs, Manny has three, the last one in 1996. Of course, you may remember last year, he had one against Frankie Rodriguez. Anyway, first of all, it's Russell Martin. And a strike. Martin struck out twice, lined out to left, 0 for 3. Martin is 2 for 8. And another strike. Lyon pitched the ninth inning last night and struck Martin out. 0 oh and 2. In the dirt. One ball and two strikes. Brandon Lyon out of Salt Lake City, Utah. 6'1, 195. He'll be 29 the 10th of August.
Fastball two and two the count. When Brandon was with the Red Sox, he picked up a save. He was the second youngest Sox pitcher to log a save since 1969. Two and two. Now he goes three and two. Well, you know what this crowd is. It would be the nightmare for Bob Melvin. The idea of Martin getting on and Ramirez hitting one out. Three and two. Fastball hit up the middle. And now this place is going to go bananas. Do you believe the scenario that it would even get down to this? Hollywood meets Hollywood. Wow. Ramirez rounded to short in the second inning, single to left in the fourth, and checked his swing in the sixth inning. On a little roll of the first, he was credited with a base hit, but Matt Kemp was caught in a rundown. So here we go, and this crowd on its feet. Martin, of course, can present yet another problem the fact that he has stolen 10 out of 15. And after Ramirez, Jeff Kemp. Pulled down and away, and he went after it. Don't forget, there are still two more games in the series. Tomorrow night, Yusnero Petit and Hiroki Kuroda. Sunday afternoon, Doug Davis and Jason Johnson. 0 and 1. One and one. All you have to do is look at the dugouts right now, and you can understand. Both teams on the railing. The Dodgers sweating out every pitch. And on the other side of the diamond, the same thing. One ball, one strike. Breaking ball, not much on it, not much of a break. Two and one the count. So Manny is in the driver's seat here. They were together in 02 and 03. In 02, Manny was the batting champion that year. He had 349. Two and one. Fastball away. Two and two. One of Manny's strengths is driving the ball to right and right center. So a lot of times he can take that same pitch and hit it out. Nobody out. Martin, the time running first. Bottom of the ninth. Two one D back. Two balls and two strikes. Do you come in or do you go away? Away. Away and down. Still two and two. One reason that Lyon has been throwing a lot of fastballs is the fact that I know Bob Melvin feels that Manny is an excellent breaking ball hitter. And if he's going to throw a fastball, it better be fast and it better be up around the letters. A little ground ball to short. They're going to get one. Can you believe a double play? 
So instead of that game winning home run with a man aboard that everybody was thinking and feeling instead a 6 4 3 DP and the batter is Jeff Kent and now folks are getting up and walking out as if Jeff Kent is hamburger. <laughs> That's amazing. For the D backs they're still on the railing but they were delighted and relieved on the double play. And the batter Jeff Kemp. And there's a beach ball on the warning track out in left center. Timeout for the moment. Two runs, seven hits, one error for the D-backs. One run, six hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Two out in the ninth. Manny, two for four, two singles, one a check swing single, and then the huge double play. So here is Kent with his foot in the door. And a high pop fly, Orlando Hudson. And now the D backs are three games in front of the Dodgers. With two games left in the series and eight games left between the two teams. And another one run game. That's six of the ten meetings. And the last five have been 8 7, 3 2, 6 5, 2 1, and 2 1 again. And the player of the game, certainly with all that pressure, Brandon Lyon, his 24th save. The time of the game, two hours and 51 minutes. And by the way, Randy Johnson is the winning pitcher. Randy has won five straight, and he is 7 and 0 oh here at Dodger Stadium. Tony Clark's 248th home run got them even, and the double by Stephen Drew drove in the winning run. Tomorrow night, they'll try it again. Yasmiro Petit and Hiroki Kuroda. Once again, the final score, D-backs two, Dodgers one. Stay tuned for Dodgers Live, and it starts right now. Good night, everybody. All right, Finn, thank you very much. Well, that was uh, that was really something. Uh, welcome to Dodgers Live, everybody. I'm Patrick O'Neill. This here, Psycho Steve Lyon. Certainly a lot of hype for Manny Ramirez. Uh, cover the L.A. Times uh, newspaper today. 30,000 tickets sold in the last 24 hours for this weekend series, which is the most ever in Dodger Stadium history. And he gets an opportunity to win it in the ninth inning. Uh, I guess he's human after all, but uh, it was it was really something seeing 55,239 people on their feet at the end of this game. Yeah, a little disheartening that after he bounced into the 6-4-3, a lot of them started to leave, even True. with Jeff Kent coming to the plate. But, you know, uh, he went two for four tonight, didn't really hit the ball that hard except for uh, his second at bat where he got a base hit. But, you know, I mean, he is going to bounce into some double plays like he did tonight because he hits the ball so hard. Let's go through Manny's at-bats. First time up, grounded to short, fairly harmless right there. He had swung at every pitch that he saw all the way through his third at-bat. So here's his second at-bat, smokes this one pretty good, through the six hole, and passed through for a base hit. And then the crazy at-bat, his third at-bat, this is the sixth inning, just a check swing, but good hustle. Everyone says Manny doesn't hustle. Randy Johnson couldn't get over there, but bad base running over here by the Tinkle guy, Matt Kemp. He gets hung up, maybe have a chance to score another run in that inning. Matt Kemp had driven in uh, Juan Pierre with his double. Now two for three on the night. This fourth at-bat right here, this ball hit pretty hard on the ground. No way you're going to avoid that double play because he hit the ball too hard and he doesn't run that well. Easy double play ball to virtually end the game. Then uh, Jeff Kent came up and popped it up. But, you know, the, the thing that I look at with the Dodgers here, back to back two to one right. losses, you know, you cannot, and Kevin Kennedy talks about this all the time, you cannot throw a number up on the board and then go out that next half inning and give it back up. And that's what the Dodgers have done in back to back nights. In the sixth, they score to go ahead. In the seventh, they let the other team to go right back out there and score to take the lead. Can't have that happen. And, and disappointing for Matt Kemp with the base running. You know, he's done this a lot. He's on an absolute tear, a major league leading 19 game hitting streak. You call him the tickle guy again. Why? Because every time he does something, you know something's going to happen. 
happen, True. whether it's good or bad. You know he's an exciting player. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Right. You don't want to go to take a tinkle okay. when he's playing. Thank you. Just wanted you to say it. Uh, you know, Clayton Kershaw, I thought, Steve, certainly showed me something. Here's his 11th start, only one win to show for it, but he put up six straight zeros against the Diamondbacks. Your thoughts on his effort? He's getting better and better every time out there. We talked about the key to his start tonight would be the, his ability to keep the ball down in the strike zone. This is a great hitting ball club. The numbers don't show it, but if you're up in the zone, they're a very, very good hitting ball club with a lot of power. So it was key for him to keep the ball down in the zone and mix up his pitches, and I think he did that very he, well. He tonight. got out of some jams in the second and the fifth and uh, a couple of strikeouts that, that we're going we're gonna to hopefully take a look at. Uh, but as far as, as Clayton Kershaw, again, the location, I think what you're talking about is key for him. Yeah, watch location of these pitches. He's going in and out. That ball right there by Connor Jackson is a ball that's hit pretty hard because he left it up mid-thigh. But he got himself out of these jams with that pitch on the corner, unhittable. Look at the location of that one right at the kneecaps. Fastball. Now he goes hard in on Randy Johnson. Didn't want to swing. Couldn't hold himself up. A little emotion out of Clayton Kershaw, too, after one of those innings. Gave a little fist pump one time in there. Love to see it. Young kid, great poise, great arm, learning how to pitch. This was one of his better outings. Dodgers should have got some runs for this guy. They, he deserved a better fate. They have the one run, uh, one run lead uh, going into that seventh inning, and you know Kershaw gets pinch hit for it. It paid off because Pierre was able to get a board and score on on Kemp's double. Chanho Park comes in, I believe first pitch. Tony Clark just says, "See you later." The Dodgers have gone eight consecutive games without allowing a home run, which they hadn't done in that's like 12 straight years. They hadn't gone that far, and they give it right back. This is one of the reasons why they went back out and picked up Tony Clark. No, not only yeah. is he a great influence in the clubhouse, just an outstanding human being but also a pretty good hitter and he's hit the ball very well for the Diamondbacks only two home runs on the season but that one's dead center in Dodger Stadium everyone knows that it's kind of hard to jump the yard here but that's the kind of lift that he gives them and then Joe Bible came in and this ball everyone thought this was going to be a foul ball yeah, so even did, yeah. Drew Look at just that. bounced right on the foul line to drive in and this is the kind of things that the Diamondbacks are getting to to work for them where the Dodgers aren't. They, they're not finding a ball down the line that bounces off the chalk and stays fair and guys get to run around the bases. We have a crazy play with Manny Ramirez, but it doesn't end up good because uh, Matt Kemp rounds third a little bit too hard. That's one Costly. of those plays. If you're the guy on second base like Matt Kemp was on that play, if there's a little check swing roller to the right side, you make a decision. You either say, I'm going to third and I'm stopping right there and I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna hang in there or I'm gonna keep going. I'm running around third and I'm gonna keep going home. Maybe someone will make a mistake. You know, someone's supposed to make that play. Randy Johnson's supposed to get over there, make the play. If he's safe, Randy's running away from the play. You keep going. You can't have one or the other. You know, you gotta make that decision there. You can't be in between. Uh, well, again, nobody's sicker than, than Matt Kemp over that play, uh, certainly out of, out of 55,000 people. Uh, let's take a look at the standings right now. Steve mentioned it, uh, back-to-back 2-1 -back losses for the Dodgers to the Diamondbacks. Now three games back in the standings and with two more to play against Arizona. And uh, it makes tomorrow's game uh, with Hiroki Kuroda, who's been downright terrible since the All-Star break. He has got to come out tomorrow night and, and throw one of those types of games. And, and the Dodgers pitching staff has been great. Only two runs in both of these games. Extremely important game tomorrow night, to say the least. It, it absolutely is. I, I'm glad you didn't call it a must win because it's not a must win, but it is a very important game because if you can win the next two, you're back to one game back with in, in this right. series. And, and as I talked about before, it's not so important that you get you sweep the series or you get swept in this series, the season's over, but it's important to stay close. You can't go five back and then expect to, to climb right back in. It's yeah. going to take a long time to make up that difference, even if you can, 50 games, whatever, how many games left there are to play. But you go five back, you're just fighting your way back. You, you have to stay close so that if the, the Diamondbacks slip and lose three in a, in a row somewhere, you can take the lead back again. you got to stay close. Very important for, for Corona to come out, throw strikes, keep the ball down, and keep his team in the game. When am I allowed to say it's a must win? When it is an actually a must win? Yeah, when, when, when you lose that game, you go home. Okay, so I'm going to wait to calling anything a must win until Absolutely. that time. All right, hey, I want everybody to stay tuned because we're going to go to uh, the studio in L.A. after this break with Michael Leaves and Kevin Kennedy, the best of Manny being Manny. Wait to hear uh, Mike and Kevin coming up next. Stick around.